Question 71 says, which of the points below is a solution to the uh, y is less than the absolute value of x minus 3? So uh, it's possible maybe there's more than one answer. So I'm going to set this up with writing y less than y less than y is less than y is less than. And I'm going to go ahead and quickly evaluate the following for each of these. I'm going to evaluate the, I'm going to do the x minus 3 and then the absolute value of that. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. This is false. 1 is not less than 1. So it is not choice A. And I don't know if it could be more than one choice, but A doesn't work. Uh, B, if I put 5 in, no, no, negative 4 in that, it's going to become negative 4 minus 3 negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So when I plug 5 in for x, I get y is 5, 5 is less than 7. That's true, right? Negative 4, negative 5, negative 7. That's true. So b works. Is it the only one? I don't know, but it looks like b is working. Uh, what about if I plug in a or 8? Let's plug in 8. No, no, negative 2 is the next one. Negative 2 goes in. Um, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. This says 8 is less than 5. No. And then the last option there, I'm going to plug in 0. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 3 is less than 3. No. So B is the only choice. It's the only one that worked when I plugged it in. It said 5 is less than 7. Write and solve an inequality for this situation. To honor 50 years in business, All Skates Bowling is having an anniversary special. Shoes rent for $1.50 and each game is 75 cents. If Charlie has $20 and needs to rent shoes, how many games can he bowl? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, let x equal the number of x is number of games he bowls. And if x is how many games he bowls, I know he has to rent the shoes, so that's $1.25, and every single game is 75 cents, so plus 0.75 times x. Now, that number, when I, when I add those up, $1.25 plus 75 uh, cents times x, that has to be less than, it can be no more than $20. So I'm going to say it has to be less than or equal to $20. Right? So to solve that inequality, I'm going to take 20 and subtract $1.70, $1.25 rather, and then that's $18.75. And I'm going to divide that by 0.75, divide it by 0.75, and I get 25. So I get 25 games, right? Ooh, x, x has to be less than or equal to 25 games. So he could play up to 25 games. And if I put 25 in there just as a boundary check, $1.25 times 0.75 times 25, uh-oh. I got a problem. A dollar twenty-five plus seventy-five cents times twenty-five games. Oh no, it gives me twenty. Yeah, he could play no more than twenty-five games. He could play twenty-five games or less. Um, that was seventy-two. Seventy. Hmm. Seventy-three. It says solve this systems of equations algebraically. Okay. Uh, I am going to solve using elimination. Um, I can see I've already got this negative 3y. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 3. So when I do that, this equation becomes 3y plus 3x equals negative 27. 
and the other equation stays the same. It's uh, 2x minus 3y is 12. These are on the same side of the equation, but you can see I've got a negative 3y, a positive 3y and a negative 3y. And when I add these equal things to these equal things, I get equal things. So I think I'm left with 5x equals negative 27 and 12. 15? Of course it's 15. Negative 15. Negative 27 plus 12. Yeah, it's negative 15. Negative 15. That means that x would be negative 3. And now that I know x is negative 3, I'm going to plug that in and figure out what y is. So y plus x, which was negative 3, is negative 9. That's just me just copying this equation down. Therefore, y would equal negative 9 plus 3, which is negative 6. So I believe my solution is x is negative 3. Oops, that's right. Ordered pair. I got negative 3 comma negative 6. And if I plug those in just to check, 2 times x would be negative Hmm. Let me write this in green because this is my check. 2 times negative 3 would be negative 6. And negative 3 times negative 6 would be 18. And yeah, 18 minus 6 is 12. So it works in the first equation. And if I add those, if I add x and y, negative 3 plus negative 6, it does give me negative 9. So it works in the second, second system. So this is definitely my answer. Right, let's take a look at... 74. Three years ago, the average price of a movie ticket was a dollar was eight dollars and seventy-five cents. Three years ago. And now, and now the price is 1087. What are the annual multiplier and the percent increase? Sketch a graph and make a table for this situation. Well, I'll tell you right now. The graph sketching, I may do, but the table I need. To, to organize my thinking here. So I'm going to say that uh, I want to do here's, I'm going to just say here's now, here's now. Oh, and it says, and now it's 1087. So now it's $10.87. Probably needed more room. Let's do this. I'll say, and now is $10.87. But here's one year ago, two years ago, three years ago. So in the past, three years ago, it was $8.75. So look, this is writing this table down really saves me because I can see I'm going to multiply by my multiplier one time, two times. Man, it's, it, I, don't, I don't know why, but it's always hard for me to see this. From negative three to two is once. From negative two to negative one is another. And then from negative one to zero is another. So it's by three of them, right? One, two, three. So I've got $8.75, and I'm going to multiply by BBB. BBB, B to the third. And it becomes $10.87. All right, so let's get B to the third alone. B to the third then would equal $10, not $18, $10.87 divided by $8.75. And then if I raise that to the one third power, it's gonna give me my, my multiplier. So on my calculator, I'm gonna take $10.87. I'm going to divide that by $8.75. Not even try to make them look like fractions, because they're not. And then I'm gonna take that answer and I'm going to raise it to the one third power to undo cubing the B. And I get 1.0749, hmm. bunch of decimals. So I would say my multiplier to the nearest tenth is 1.07, 1.07. Now, let me, let me do two more decimal places. I'm going to do, the, the next decimals are 4, 9, 9, and then a 6. So it's asking what's the percent increase. So my multiplier, that is my multiplier. My percent increase is not the one, it's this right here. It's seven, seven point, I would say 7.5% increase, right? So you can see I, I rounded that to the nearest 10th of a percent. 
So if your multiplier is 1.07, you know, it's going up by 7%. This is more than 7% because of these decimals. So I'm going to say it's a 7.5% increase. So multiplier, multiplier B is 1.0749. Nine nine six, and I I would if I was gonna check this, uh, I'd probably put all these decimals into my keep them in my calculator and just verify that the eight seventy five does grow to ten dollars and eighty seven cents, which is a set about a seven point five percent increase. About okay, good. Uh, next ninety seven solve the following equations for x solve this equation for x okay so I'm going to add six y so this is going to become four x is six y plus twenty x is it it is six y plus twenty both of those have to be divided by four I can leave the answer like this or I can divide each of those factors uh, terms rather each of those terms by four. So I could also say x is 2 thirds times y plus the number 5. So that's my answer for A. Uh, for B, mm, solve for x. I got a fraction bust this. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this by 5x. Brilliant move. I never want to solve a, frac a problem that's got the uh, variable I'm solving for in the denominator. A lovely cup of, cup of evening coffee here with oat milk. Uh, so I'm going to multiply everything by 5x. This is, I'm going to put a factor of 5x here, here, and here. So 5x divided by 5 is going to be x. So this is going to become 4x plus, this is going to be 5 times 18. 18 times 5 is the number 90 plus 90. The x's are canceling, and that will equal 40, 40 x. 8 times 5 is 40. If I take away 4x from both sides, that's 36. 90 equals 36x. Um, let me grab my calculator. 40. I did not just do that. Okay, so divide both sides by 36. 90 over 36. Uh, it looks like five halves or three point five halves or two point five, right? So x is five halves or two point five. There we go. And again, plugging that value in, like eighteen divided by two point five plus four fifths should equal eight. Let me check that. Four fifths plus eighteen divided by two point five. I should get oop, mm -mm -mm, four fifths plus 18 divided by 2.5. That should give me the number eight, and it does. So that's definitely the solution. That was A and C, I skipped B, let's go to B. Solving for X. I'm gonna double both sides. So instead of, instead of distributing that one half, I'm just gonna multiply both sides by two. That's gonna give me X minus six equals 18. Um, there's only one term on each side, right? Th this is just a single term. I mean, that term is composed of two factors, and one of the factors has two terms, but that is just a single term. So that got hit with a 2, and then this hit got hit with a 2. Uh, and then if I add 6 to both sides, x is 24. And I know that works because if I take the fraction 1 half, and I multiply it by the quantity of 24 minus 6. My calculator gives me the number 9. You probably cannot see that. Sorry. So, yeah, it definitely, it definitely is the value that works. So x is 24. And then the last one, absolute value equation. So I need to isolate the absolute value part first. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So this says the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is the number three. So absolute value, we got two places, right? We've got the, the positive three, positive three, and the negative three. So this thing, right, the two x minus three could either equal positive three, or the two x minus three could equal negative three. Um, and this is kind of looking inside, right? The, the absolute value of something is three, 
That thing inside is either negative three or three. Uh, solving, I'm gonna add three to both sides. Ooh, that means that two X is zero and then X is zero. So one of my answers is X is zero. And the other answer, uh, two X is six. Okay, and then if I divide by two, I get X is three. So my two answers are X is zero and X is three. If I put zero in there, that becomes uh, two plus the absolute value of negative three, right? Because X is zero, that is the absolute value of negative three is three, two plus three is five, and it checks for that value. And if I put three in there, it's two times three, which is six, six minus three is three. Absolute value of three is three, two plus, two plus three is five. It checks for this answer also. All right, so that's that question. Um, well, last question. Last question is, determine if the triangles are at right are congruent. If they are, justify your answer by using one of the triangle congruence conditions and state the sequence of rigid transformations that maps one triangle onto the other. They didn't ask me to do a flowchart proof. So as I look at these, all right, reflexive property, it's clearly the case that DB would be congruent to DB, right, by the reflexive property. So what I have here is side angle side, right? They both have this side. Oh, let me use these, this highlighter. So this side right here goes with this side. So we've got side and then, oh, I gotta change color. Then we've got this angle, goes with this angle. And then finally I'll change color one more time. I'll use orange. And then this side down the middle is belongs to both, right? So by side angle side, these two triangles are congruent. Okay, so they're congruent by S, A, S congruence. And which triangles are congruent? I'll say A, B, triangle A B to B to D is congruent to triangle C, D, B, C to D to B. The last thing it says though is name a series of rigid transformation that would map one onto the other. I know that there's going to have to be a rotation here, so I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say translate B to D. So I'm going to take this triangle, I'm going to slide it over so that B, so that B ends up right where D is, right? B is here, and then D, and yeah, B is there, and it's actually point D on this one. So translate B to D. Trans. B to B to D. And you're probably wondering, why can't you just reflect it? Well, if I reflect it, the parts wouldn't match up, right? They wouldn't match up. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've translated that B to D, I'm going to rotate this thing. I'm going to rotate this triangle. Oh my gosh. I'm going to rotate until um, this would have to be uh, this would have to be a prime now and this would be d prime i'm going to rotate this thing around d okay rotate t a a round the original d uh which direction i'm going to rotate counterclockwise i'm going to rotate counterclockwise against the clock rotate around d counterclockwise until um, a prime, a prime lands at C. Yeah, so this point is going to come all the way around. And when that a prime lands at this C, um, this part D, D prime will land right back where B is and all the matching parts would line up perfectly. <clears throat> So yeah, by SAS congruence, and those are the triangles that are congruent, and it's just a matter of sliding one over and then rotating it until they lined up. I don't have an animation tool here, that's so sad. All right, well, that's it for this homework assignment, and I look forward to seeing you in class again soon. Stop recording.